against Common Core in Florida. The Common Core standards are national standards portrayed at the state level as voluntary that are actually being implemented by Washington, D.C. trade groups funded by the federal government and unaccountable private organizations. One of the huge issues with Common Core is that it has been reported that every aspect of your child's school and personal life, including all their interactions with their teachers, will be monitored from cradle to career by a massive database shared with the federal government, other states, researchers, and private corporations without consent. Another issue which has parents getting active in this battle is that the standards seem to be poor in quality and are definitely untested. The system seems to be financially unsustainable and it snares home and private school students which do not want to conform to Common Core standards but seem to have little choice. Then comes the big question, is Common Core constitutional? The 10th Amendment of the United States Constitution established that the principle that the power to oversee education belongs to the states. This long-standing principle of local control of education is reiterated throughout our laws and government codes. For generations, Americans have understood that the constitutional authority for education rests with the states and not the federal government. Critics of Common Core see these standards as a federal overreach and a violation of both the letter and spirit of federal education law and the United States Constitution. Our first interview will be with Dr. Ephraim from the Florida Stop Common Core Coalition. Our second interview will be with the Common Core activist with God's Hand in History Tours. Dr. Karen Ephraim is a pediatrician, researcher, and conference speaker. She has a medical degree from John Hopkins University, and her pediatric training is from University of Minnesota. She's provided testimony for Congress, as well as in-depth analysis for numerous pieces of major federal education, health, and early childhood legislation for congressional staff, state legislators, and many organizations. She serves on two boards in two national organizations, Education Liberty Watch and the Alliance for Human Research Protection. She has spoken at numerous state and national conferences, and she has been interviewed by Fox News, The Wall Street Journal, the British Medical Journal, National Journal, World Net Daily, Newsmax, Shark Tank, as well as newspaper and radio stations across the country. Dr. Ephraim and her husband, Paul, have three wonderful children. The first question I have for you, Dr. Ephraim, is we have heard that Common Core standards are nowhere near as rigorous as proponents claim. Can you give an example of the lack of academic quality and rigor in the Common Core standards? The English standards have been called empty skill sets, and um, they put a heavy emphasis on non-literature, you know, uh, fact-based papers and policy things, and uh, so that de-emphasis of literary study is going to harm vocabulary development and critical thinking. Mm-hmm. On the math side, they um, they use experimental methods for geometry that were actually rejected by the Soviet Union. Um, they don't they delay algebra until ninth grade, which will harm children's ability to uh, be ready for a selective four year university. And um, they are not internationally benchmarked. There's no data to show that they are as good as the standards of high-performing countries. And in fact, one of the professors who refused to sign off on the final version of the math standards, James Milgram, a professor emeritus from Stanford, said that the using the Common Core math standards will put American students two years behind their international peers by the end of eighth grade and farther behind by the end of high school. That's that's and unbelievable. One, and one of yeah, it's really bad. And in fact, one of the major architects of the Common Core standards admitted that college ready is really only for a non selective two year community college. Hmm. Well, 
I mean, how how is that exactly rigorous? Uh, I've noticed that the people that are for Common Core, um, when you know, because I was trying to read both sides to come to my conclusion, um, kept on stating rigorous standards, rigorous standards. What are they comparing that to? I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> okay, I was just <laughs> curious. <laughs> because they say they're more rigorous. They say they're more in-depth fewer, clearer, higher, deeper, um, all these adjectives, but they provide no proof, and there's never been any field testing of these standards. Hmm. And um, actually, one of the proponent organizations that rates standards all over the country, Thomas B. Fordham, rated Florida's math standards as current math standards is more rigorous than the Common Core, and the English standards just a little bit lower than Common Core. You know, you're talking B plus to B, right. effectively. And a number of the highest performing states in the nation uh, actually will be taking a step down to use Common Core particularly California, Massachusetts, Indiana, and Minnesota in math, and uh, Indiana, Massachusetts, and Texas in English. And then there was just a study that came out that said uh, Georgia's previous standards before the Common Four are rig- more rigorous in both math and English than the Common Four. Yeah, I believe I saw that study. You know, and that that brings me to another question that um, a lot of parents are are really concerned about. It's been reported that Common Core has linked data collection system, and it compromises the student and family privacy. Um, Can you explain exactly to our listeners what data is collected and how they are stating that's going to be used if they're giving us uh, the, the reasons it's going to be used at all? National Center for Education Statistics has a student data handbook that uh, contains about 400 different data points on students and many, many on teachers as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the conditions for the Race to the Top grant, besides uh, adopting the Common Core Standards, was to develop a what they call a state longitudinal database and expand it. And the reason is because states have given up their sovereignty and must be accountable to the federal government for all these different education programs that never should have been done in the first place. Exactly. Um, exactly. I, the, I'm very concerned about the constitutionality of this uh of this proposed oh, law. It is a mess. It is a mess. Um, but the types of data range from test data, name, address, uh, to a lot of non academic things, psychosocial hmm. uh, pieces like behaviors and attitudes. And actually, the federal government admitted in another document that. They want the Common Core Standards to teach and the national assessments to test uh, psychological data. Wow. And that is, they want them to, to teach and monitor psychological attitudes, mindsets, uh, behaviors, and characteristics. And so they're basically that, creating a profile on each child. Right. And it starts in kindergarten. It actually starts in preschool and goes all the way through the workforce. I saw some reports that things like the student's religion, the parent's political affiliation, all those things are included. Is that true or is that rumor? Yes. It's, no. Um, if you look... It's true or it's rumor? The, I'm sorry. The, the, it's true. Oh, my. If you look in the... The student data handbook, you will find those elements listed. Wow. And um, that seems um, 
an overstep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what a else to call bit. it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it is. Well, I, I'm thinking just the privacy issues. It, I mean, okay, we know it's unconstitutional. It, it, that's that's pretty basic. That's a black and white issue there, in my opinion. Um, now, on the on the privacy issue, you would think that would be enough for the uh, for our state to get rid of this thing. I mean, it, you don't have to have a poli- your political affiliation doesn't really uh, matter. Everyone's concerned about their privacy. Right, right, and to me, as a mother and a pediatrician, mm-hmm. this is the worst aspect, especially because they're going to be collecting psychological data on children, uh, again, without parents' consent. And they really, the way current law is written, don't have to get it because it's considered part of the academic program. Wow. And uh, that is appalling to me and what is supposed to be a free society. This is going to be, you know, this is going to make the NSA and the IRS scandal pale. It's going to make it look mild, tame. It's just, it is just unacceptable. It really is unacceptable. And actually, that brings me to another point that I would like to ask you about. Um, You know, we're a history program. We talk about current events that are uh, current news that is affecting our liberty. But we also talk about um, American history and its foundations. Um, And we've had programs on Ben Franklin. And we've talked about how at the convention, when a woman came up to him and asked, you know, what kind of government did the convention give us? Ben Franklin stated, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. And uh, the question I'm I'm wanting to ask you is, are children, are our children in this uh, education system, are they going to be educated to maintain a republic? Or are they being educated to uh, maintain business and to promote the state? Because the research that I have seen on this curriculum, as I've been looking through, and I'm a homeschool parent of four, um, is... So I'm very, I, I, you know, I'm very much into checking every word of the curriculum out. Um, right. It seems to me that it almost seems like an indoctrination, like they're promoting like almost social justice, um, activism at young ages, things that I didn't think yep. children really should be necessarily exposed to yet, just because they're so, they seem so infused with political um, talking points. I, are you getting the same impression from this? Oh, it, it's not just an impression, it's fact. Okay. If you look at the, um, for instance, the list of text exam- examples in the Common Core English Standards, the official list, they only suggest reading the preamble and the first ten amendments to the Constitution. Hmm. And yet they have long passages from an EPA manual on insulation levels and another one on healthcare reform. I saw one from the Federal order. Reserve. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah. That's but insanity. It's, it's, it's really interesting because the um, model curriculum for the Gettysburg Address, which is also in there, which is a good thing, right? Um, they have the teachers tell the students to read it cold, meaning no historical or cultural context whatsoever. They don't tell them it's a funeral. They don't tell them it's the major battle of the Civil War. Uh, they don't bring up the issues that were affecting the nation at the time. And the reason, and they actually say this in the model curriculum guidelines, is they don't want some children to, to know more than others. They want to, quote, level the playing field, end quote. So they're using one of the most important historical documents of our nation to not teach history, but to, to do social justice. That seems like you are, that, that, that seems criminal to me, that you would attempt to purposely hold back a child. I mean, how right. I, I don't understand. I mean, I know, you know, it, we have to look. There's two sides to every coin, right? They're, they're trying right. to say we don't want to hold back 
you know, we don't want some kids to go ahead of others because it's not fair to the kids who are being held back or or whatever their excuse is. But I mean, what about the other side of the coin? What about the children who are excelling? What about our future uh, scientists and astronomers and, um, you know, our future poets and our future future musicians? We're going to hold them back. How is that good for our society? I, I'm not really understanding the thought process behind this. Well, and if you combine it with the Florida State Board of Education idea to um, have race-based proficiency targets. I saw that. Where they have higher per, higher percentages of uh, Oriental, Asian, and white students uh, reaching goals than black and Hispanic students. It's appalling. I had one African-American activist describe this to me as a caste system. Of, it is. It, 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 it's a, it's, I w- if... If they were doing that to my child, I would be so offended. I would be so offended. I would pull my child out so quickly out of the school system just because I wouldn't want my child feeling like they are less than somebody else just because of their race. I I can't believe that they're promoting this type of racism. To me, that's what it seems like. It seems like racism. Right. And and I'm firmly against that. I cannot believe that that's happening in our school system. Um. What what exactly, I, I asked a few of the parents um, on our website, the storyofliberty.net, on our Facebook page, uh, if they had a question for you. And the number one question was, uh, what is the effect of Common Core on families in private and home schools? The big concern is that the, uh, well, there's several. The biggest concern for private school students is that Governor Scott is talking about requiring all voucher students in private schools to take the state test Hmm. because everybody's supposed to shift to the Common Core standard. If they require those voucher students to take the test, then they're going to have to teach the standards to everybody in the private school, uh, or the school may not be able to continue either financially or academically because they won't receive those vouchers. Oh, I see. Um, The other issue is that the national test for college entrance, like ACT and SAT, are being aligned to the Common Core, as are a number of uh, Christian-based textbooks and curricula. Right, I saw that. A lot of that—that's a big problem that the homeschoolers, I think, are running into. Is that right. the, the, the text and the um, curriculum is aligning to Common Core, so they can stay in business. The textbook companies right. and. And right. then when you bring that into your home, then you're aligning yourself with Common Core, basically. Right. Um, and then I'm sure this affects college placement as well, right? Well, it may well. You know, it depends on how much the um, colleges depend on those test scores on the uh, ACT, SAT, and even the GED, which are all being all being aligned. Um, before um, before we have to go today, I just wanted to ask you one more question. Um, many have brought up the tangled web of conflicts of interest and influence by private unaccountable trade groups and foundations. Um, what are some of the outside trade groups and foundations that are um, funding Common Core? Well, the standards were developed by the Council of Chief State school officers, the National Governors Association, and a group called Achieve, which is basically uh, personnel and principals from both of the other two. And these were the same people that got us into both 2000 and School to Work back in the mid-90s. But these three organizations are heavily funded by uh, the Bill Gates Foundation, 
and GE Foundation and other uh, large corporate interests that want to profit from the data, the data collection, the educational software, the hardware, uh, even the monitoring equipment that they want to have on every child in front of these computerized lessons and assessments and uh, cameras in the classroom to monitor how teachers teach. Cameras in the classroom? Yes. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> so basically what we're looking at is 1984 in the classroom. It's kind of looking... It's starting to get that way, yeah. My goodness. Well, Dr. Effum, thank you so much for joining us today. And we really appreciate you taking your time out um, of your b very busy day. Uh, prayers going to you that you uh, for success and all that you have to accomplish today. I just hope that, that you can get your voice out there and uh, get some parents activated to stop this horrible encroachment on our liberties. Well, thank you very much. And if your um, listeners want more information, please um, have them visit uh, fl.bccoalition.org. That's right. And we will Florida also... Stop Common Core Coalition. That's right. And last night we also posted that link on our Facebook page. So you guys can go ahead and check that out on our Facebook page. We um, link your Facebook page to ours. And you can go on our website and we will have links for both of these videos. And don't forget to check out our Roku channel where we will have the entire interview in video format. So thank you again for joining us and have a blessed day. You too. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All of these questions and answers can be found on the Florida Stop Common Core Coalition website. You can find them at flstopccoalition.org. That's floridastopccoalition.org. You won't want to miss next week when we interview an activist with Common Core, with God's hand in history, stay tuned and have a wonderful rest of the week. Hello, this is John Bona. Join me every Monday from 4.30 to 5 for the Story of Liberty on Waxy 1370 AM and 107.9 FM and Sundays at 8 on Rush 94.7 FM.